Hello everybody. I hope you can hear me well. I hope you all arrived, are all settled. My name is Mitko Vidanovsky, Product Specialist at the Reality Solutions Group. And it's my great pleasure today to welcome you to our session. As you may know now, this is our first of the many planned in the following weeks. The today title is The Basic of Terrestrial 3D Laser Scanning with Recap that you can see on your screen. And today presenter is Dr. Aaron Morris, Senior Product Manager of the Reality Solutions Group. Before I give my place to Aaron, I would like to share some short brief information. Today's session is planned to last for 30 minutes and there will be 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. At any point you may type your questions in this questions tab on the GoToWebinar app and we'll try with our panelists, we'll try our best to address them during this live session. If some questions get unanswered, we'll make sure to follow up through email. You can write us to recap.community at autodesk.com. And I want to share some uh, useful links, uh, our product page from where you can download our products. All the latest news you can check on our blog and the schedule of our upcoming webinars. You can also go to realitycomputing.typepad.com. You can also post and check our forum and visit the latest YouTube videos on our YouTube channel. And also, just before we start, uh, if we may, I want to ask you two simple questions that will show up briefly on your screen. It will take for uh, five uh, seconds and you can select your answer. And just another one. Thank you. I'll close now the pool and we'll give my place to Aaron. Aaron, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's get started. Uh, again, welcome. I'm glad everyone could join us uh, this morning. Um, this is again the first in a in a in a great series of webinars that will be uh, showcasing a lot of what Reality Solutions has to offer, uh, scanning and digital capture at large. Um, today is just the basics, so we're just going to be uh, talking about uh, what laser scanning is and uh, how you can use Recap uh, to uh, look at the data. Um, so, so what are we talking about when we talk about laser scanning or capture in general? And that's digitizing the 3D world, um, both in uh, geometry and in color. Um, so uh, why would you want to do this? Um, there is a so great example here um, provided to us by NASA. Uh, there's a lot of existing infrastructure. And this, this is a wind tunnel um, that uh, they are building around and uh, they don't have good as-built documentation. So uh, by taking equipment in, like the scanner you see here, uh, the gentleman's uh, in the middle, um, by taking this equipment in and hitting a button, they get um, 3D information detailing uh, geometry, distance, um, and even sort of the material uh, reflection properties of around it. Uh, but what's what's great about it is that uh, you know this data sits on uh, on your laptop, so uh, that information that was once only obtained uh, in the field uh, can now be obtained uh, on your desktop, um, and uh, large large sections of uh, you know of an of an area such as an entire wind tunnel can be treated uh, as an object and can be shared amongst collaborators and other individuals who uh, may need to work on using it. Uh, but it can go even beyond that, uh, even in terms of a complex entire sites or complexes uh, up to um, you know, uh, cities and, and, and uh, interstates. 
Um, and uh, once in this digital form, there's a whole bunch of questions that can be answered uh, directly from the data that you uh, would normally, again, require you to be out in the field. Um, Things such as, uh, you know, I have uh, an existing uh, building. I don't have a floor plan. Can I make one? Absolutely. Um, you know, the, a number of operations evolve just checking clearance. Uh, the state allows that to be checked virtually. Um, when it comes to laying, you know, new, new duct work out or any new, uh, new uh, equipment, um, you know, what's in the environment matters. And uh, it, it doesn't get any better than modeling to, to what is actually in the real world. Um, but this information doesn't have to be used exclusively for measurement either or layout. Uh, it can be looking at assets and their locations without having to be there. And, uh, and finally, um, you know, the ability to reconfigure um, in, a, in a virtual setting. So what if I moved a piece of equipment here or there? Uh, you could begin to do that without having physically uh, to, uh, to manhandle machinery. Um, and so what RECAP does um, to, to answer these types of questions it's, uh, is a software that allows um, this type of data uh, to be created, managed, and shared uh, and brought into the uh, Autodesk portfolio. Um, so uh, RECAP, if you were to uh, get it, if you don't have it already, uh, and, uh, and load it, would, you would see something like this, and maybe not exactly this. This is a dinosaur exhibit in the Carnegie uh, Museum. Um, but uh, you would see something like this. This is a, what we call a point cloud. These are a, a, a large collection of individual measurements that are colored based off of uh, you know, what, uh, what the, uh, the scanner uh, recorded. Um, now, important note here, RECAP is dealing with point clouds. So these are a bunch of measurements, as opposed to meshes which is another form of geometry-based representation. So, uh, but with point clouds, RECAP can visualize, so you can look at the data. Um, you can edit, so I can um, crop, I can remove, I can delete, I can highlight. Um, I can measure, um, you know, take measurements uh, from you know, any number of locations, uh, point to point. Um, tag and link, I can create notes in the data. Um, artifacts or objects that I would want to uh, maybe uh, have somebody else take note of, I can you know mark those up, and I can also provide uh, embedded information. So if there's associated uh, you know uh, Wikipedia or other articles um, that maybe uh, want to be brought in with the data, you can bind those together. Uh, and finally, you uh, can publish and share. So you can. Uh, promote this data or push this data to the web and uh, provide links to all your project collaborators. Uh, and most importantly, uh, the, the data is used to, uh, as a preparation step uh, for, uh, for use in the entire, uh, or I should say the majority of the Autodesk Hero portfolio. Uh, and in a minute I'll talk to you which, uh, which of those products uh, can use the data directly. Um, we, uh, in addition to RECAP, we have RECAP Pro. Now, Pro isn't a standalone product. It is an actual feature inside of the product. Um, it is designated by this icon, if you uh, highlight it in the menu bar. Uh, and uh, what Pro does, I'll address here in the next section as we begin to talk about laser scanning. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with laser scanning, um, this is to sort of educate you on the sort of three classes of scanners, because uh, they, they cover three sort of distinct ranges. Uh, the one uh, we're going to focus a lot on and talk about is the terrestrial. So this is your um, sort of tripod-based handheld scanner. They're, they can go anywhere from 15 to 30-some pounds. Um, and they're, they're usually uh, uh, used to document things on the order of magnitude of a building, a site, uh, or even um, infrastructure objects of a certain scale, such as bridges. Um, in addition to that, you have uh, sort of metrology based or what they call bench top scanners. Um, and these are used to uh, document uh, and uh, record objects. Um, other thing to note here is that uh, uh, with, with each of these, um, because, of, because of sort of the scale properties, the accuracy uh, is, uh, is different. So 
in the terrestrial, you're talking about millimeters. Um, and in metrology, you're, you're on the order of um, micron. Uh, and then finally, we have very large scale, um, which is uh, airborne and mobile. Um, and so this is usually captured from physical devices. And these scans large swaths of infrastructure uh, and highways. Uh, and again, the, uh, the focus of, of what, uh, what we, uh, RECAP takes in, by the way, data from all of these. But the focus of what we are uh, going to talk about here is uh, the uh, terrestrial, especially for pro, um, uh, because it's one of the uh, one of the best tools for documenting uh, in, in a very efficient manner large uh, spaces, indoor and outdoors. Um, so, uh, how does a terrestrial scanner work? Uh, there is a laser, and uh, most of the, the the newer models have embedded cameras. Um, the um, the lasers. Um, are used uh, to uh, to me take measurement. So uh, laser goes out, hits a mirror, comes back, um, and calculations are done to determine measurement. And a camera is usually associated with it um, to uh, add color. Um, the the mirror here will spin, uh, giving you a 180 degree view of of that uh, that single point. So you get, instead of one point, you get uh, 180 degrees. And then this whole base will rotate, giving you an entire sphere of data. Uh, and then from this, again, is that, uh, that point cloud, or colorized point cloud type view uh, that we've been seeing throughout the talk. Um, so uh, coming back to Recap Pro and, and why this matters, um, it, traditionally with these uh, scanners, um, uh, you, uh, you you don't just take one scan. So here's an environment, um, and uh, if I want to scan this, um, I'm going to have to place the scanner and move it around. To do that, um, I set up these targets. These targets are going to be sort of anchor points um, to tie one scan into another. Um, and so the process would be, I come in, I drop my scanner, I take a scan from this perspective, but I can't see around columns. So I will move the scanner from one point to another and take another scan. Um, and then once that's done, I'll move it to another point uh, and take another scan and repeat the process until the entire uh, area or volume of what I want to collect is taken. Uh, now, setting up these targets, as you can already uh, take, a, take a hint, um, is, is pretty tedious, especially when you're dealing with very complicated uh, environments. Um, and so that is what Recap Pro does. It provides uh, the ability to tie these scans together, which is known as registration, into a single coordinate system um, and do it without having to set up targets. Um, that said, you can use targets to specify a survey control, is what we mentioned here. But for the process of registration, um, it's not necessary. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of registration. That will be uh, reserved for, I believe, the next webinar. Um, but there is a tre tre tremendous time savings when it comes to this process. Um, so let's uh, step out and review the, the whole workflow. Um, for those, again, who are unfamiliar with scanning and how it entered, uh, is introduced into the uh, uh, HERO portfolio, um, so you take laser scans, you get multiple of those. Uh, you can view them individually with RECAP, but you combine them into the same coordinate system with RECAP Pro. From there, you can publish to uh, our web service called RECAP 360. Uh, and you can view online and share um, uh, the data and uh, annotations and measurements uh, with, uh, with anybody um, with an A360 account. Um, and then finally, you can take that data and, uh, and bring it uh, right into uh, a number of the HERO products. Um, just to sort of set the tone to give you a context around um, you know, some of the benefits and uh, what people are doing. Uh, coming back to that example I showed earlier at NASA, uh, you know, they are in the process of renovating uh, one of their facilities at the Langley uh, uh, Center. Um, they, uh, they set out to scan the entire complex. Um, it was approximately, um, I think this is uh, 
250, the dot is incorrect, 250, uh, 240,000 square feet, not uh, 232. Uh, and they, um, they took 1,500, uh, or roughly 1,600 scans. They did roughly 129 scans a day. They used uh, a particular manufacturer of Ferrofocus 3D, which is uh, what we've been showing throughout this presentation. Uh, and they were able to reduce the amount of time that uh, they had budgeted to collect uh, the data by a factor of four. They budgeted 16 weeks, and they were able to complete it in four uh, with Pro. Uh, and uh, just to give you some examples of that, again, uh, not just interior, but exterior. Uh, so this is a, a shot of the point cloud generated for the entire complex. Um, internally, um, you know, here's a comparison of what you would get up with a photograph to uh, a uh, color, uh, colored point cloud. Uh, with the advantage is in the point cloud, you can move around and look around, whereas the photo, you're fixed in perspective. Also, the point cloud provides you very rich uh, 3D uh, information. Um, what they're doing with it is uh, it's, a, it's a retrofit project, so they're um, looking to add and, and uh, change out the lab space. So they're taking this point cloud and they're converting it into a Revit model in which they're going to, from there, uh, you know, uh, do their design and new layout. Um, they've also bring it in to AutoCAD and creating floor plans uh, from the data as well um, to give you context. And that whole process goes into a workflow that we call uh, the um, building retrofit. So taking scans, um, getting uh, an as-built document, sharing that data out, and then using that data inside products like uh, Revit and AutoCAD uh, for, for new layout and conceptual design. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, uh, to let you know what Hero products support uh, the point cloud data that Recap uh, produces directly, uh, that's here. Uh, AutoCAD, Navisworks, Revit, Inventor, Infraworks, Civil 3D, Map 3D, Plant 3D, um, and 3DS Max. Um, it's also worth noting, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that um, we uh, with 2015 there's a, there's some new additions to uh, to AutoCAD and Revit, specifically with AutoCAD. Uh, in in the case of snapping, um, you can now snap 3D objects uh, directly to point cloud as if it was uh, a 3D model. So there's a lot that the Hero applications are building on top of the point cloud, not just. Um, Uh, so just to recap here, uh, in summary, uh, you know the the reasons to do laser scanning is that uh, in the in the long run it minimizes rework. Uh, if you're dealing, if you have a local copy of your reality data uh, with you um, and you're not on site, uh, you know there's there's a lower chance of doing making a mistake, doing designing something improperly because uh, you have what you need. Uh, reduces waste, um, shrinks project completion time. Yeah, a, a lot of people mentioned that you know it may add uh, a little bit of time up front to do the capture, uh, but the amount of rework, uh, you know, so in some cases reducing uh, rework in projects uh, completely uh, uh, dramatically reduces the project completion time. Um, it also allows for better estimation um, since you uh, you kind of better planning and better understanding what you're getting into, and by and large it is. Uh, one of the, the best ways to document, um, even even if you're not doing anything but documentation, you know it's it is the best way to have an as-built record of of what's been done. Uh, I just want to tell you about some resources uh, for getting more information. Um, we have our product page on the uh, Autodesk website, Autodesk.com/recap. There you can. Uh, download a trial or a recap you can always use for free. Pro, there's a 30-day trial if you want to try out the registration. Um, we also have a YouTube channel, which is the link you saw earlier, uh, which is, has a, a, a whole bunch of great videos uh, showcasing projects and examples of, of what people or how, how to do things uh, with Recam. Um, and, I, and I would like to again mention next week, which is uh, Recap Tips and Tricks for Successful Marketless Indoor Scanning. Uh, that'll be a great one for uh, sort of getting uh, the inside scoop 
um, and getting the edge on how to how to scan uh, in an indoor space and really leverage what Recap Pro, uh, what we've done for Recap Pro. Um, so at this point, I, I would uh, like to open it up to uh, some questions. Um, and again, I'll mention you know next week tips and tricks. Uh, this time on Tuesday, um, that uh, if you do want to have see, uh, read some more information about not just what's going on with Recap, but sort of uh, the world at large of uh, digital capture and, and use of data, uh, realitycomputing.pipad.com. And uh, any questions not answered uh, in the next few minutes here, uh, I'll be happy to address if you uh, send an email to recapcommunityoddesk.com. Uh, so with that, um, I would invite questions. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, we have our first question coming from Thomas. And the question is, can you register scans in the recap if there is no even surfaces? Uh, it, yes, yes. The um, even surfaces are OK. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that um, it needs feature. Um, this scan-to-scan -scan registration is what we like to call feature-based registration. So you need artifacts around you uh, in order to lock scans in. So uh, an example of where this would not do well um, is if you're in the middle of a parking lot, um, a big open space where there's only the ground plane. Um, if there's only the ground plane and you take two scans in two areas, um, it's uh, not going to have any other features to lock at sort of the x, y um, sort of dimensions. Um, but if you're, you're in an environment, even if everything's not nice and flat, uh, it will still uh, it will still do well. Our second question is, uh, uh, okay. how can people get started to download and how much is the cost coming from Olivia? Sure. Um, so uh, there's a number of ways to get started. Again, um, going to our website, um, there's a lot of, of how to get into it. Um, uh, I will mention uh, on this, uh, we uh, a program that uh, Autodesk has started in collaboration with Faro uh, called Yes You Scan. Um, this program allows uh, you to obtain a scanner uh, and a uh, and a license to Recap Pro um, for uh, Recap Pro you get for the year the scanner you get for an entire month um, to try it out yourself. You I think that also comes with one day of of training uh, provided by Faro. Um, if that is interesting to you, um, please uh, send an email to Recap Community at Autodesk .com and. Uh, We'll put you in touch with uh, the Autodesk coordinator. Um, regarding price, um, so the um, recap uh, is the baseline features which I talked to you earlier are free. Um, the uh, professional feature is uh, offered on subscription. Um, you can uh, opt to purchase it uh, for a month, a quarter, and a year. Um, the year is uh, 3,600, um, and then uh, the, uh, of course, the month and quarter or less. I can't recall off the top of my head exactly what those are, but um, please uh, check out the website. Pricing information is there. As far as laser scanners, um, uh, there's been a pretty dramatic drop in the overall price of scanning. Um, you can um, sort of the the low uh, in models um, that still do phenomenal, uh, phenomenal jobs. I think start around uh, upper 30s, lower 40s, uh, and then of course um, for the very high end, uh, very um, you know high scale um, equipment go up to 80,000. So that's that's typically the range that you're looking at. Um, but again, for a number of projects. Um, the amount of, of waste and, and time saved, uh, the process uh, more than more than takes care of the cost. Okay, I have the next one uh, coming from Stephen. 
Uh, any pro any progress on Autodesk being able to import Leica format natively into Recap directly from a scanner to Recap? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, for those on the webinar, <laughs> I'll let you know that there has been progress. Um, nothing in product to date, um, but um, we 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 are uh, moving forward with this. Um, I, I can't report exactly how it's going to come out at this point, um, uh, but uh, we—I uh, I will. I feel pretty good now that um, direct support of their format is is coming, uh, probably by the next product release. Okay, a oh, couple more. Uh, what are the file sizes of these uh, scans, and can they be can they can they be minimized uh, coming from Ron? So um, file size is uh, another great question. Uh, vary pretty dramatically, um, and that uh, they are usually controlled by the settings of the scanner. Um, so, uh, well, actually, I think there's a two-part answer to that question. First part is the raw scans, um, and again, um, you can control the settings. And each of these scanners are slightly different, but more or less, it has to do with um, controlling the amount of, of points that you get. Um, so of course, the longer the scan uh, points you get, the larger the file size. Uh, also, the quality of, the, of that scan you can change. Uh, and that will increase the file size. That you typically see is a small scan somewhere on the order of uh, 30 to 50 megabytes going up to uh, 160 to 200. That's your that's your common. Of course, you could go a little bit lower and go much higher, but you're, that's your nominal area. Um, once you bring them in to recap, those are converted into the RCS format, uh, and uh, they're actually um, uh, once you bring them in and uh, and unify them, the entire data set is a little smaller than usually the combination of all the scans. Um, but having said that. Um, it uh, you know it is an area that we are uh, looking to to improve in terms of of getting data sizes smaller uh, and more compact. Okay, we have a lot of questions here, Aaron, coming from okay. everybody. <laughs> Robin Excellent. Robin is asking: Is Pro a part of the design suites? Uh, correct. Um, recap uh, the the um, the free offering is part. It's packaged in with with every suite that um, has sort of the recap engine behind it. Um, so the design suite has uh, basic recap. And for for those customers who uh, you know are just looking at the point cloud as a preparation uh, for or bringing into um, you know a product in the the design suite. Um, that that sh that should be fine. Um, the professional feature, if um, if there is a, a a need to do the registration aspect, um, then it has to be purchased uh, separately. We have one two more minutes. So just to allow one more question uh, coming from Joshua. It's interesting. How much is the yes you scan option? Um, so um, you know what that one I, I will probably have to follow up um, with um, the, uh, the 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 contact again reach out uh, send an email to recap community because um, there has been some um, some I think last minute decisions but um, I, uh, I it, it's extremely affordable for for the amount of time that you get the scanner and I believe. Again, I, I can't. I don't want to quote you on this call. I, we'll send an email out shortly to um, to everyone on the call, uh, how everyone addressed to get more information. But what's very interesting about it is that if you um, if you decide to purchase uh, the scanner after the Yes You Scan program is is complete, um, the uh, a, a portion of the rental price will be applied to um, the cost of the scanner. So. Uh, it's a it's a really great program if you want to try this out yourself. Okay, thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, everybody, okay. Joshua, and the rest will make sure to answer all of these questions that have been posted. And for any additional, please continue to write us to our forums, blogs, 
or our email, recap.community at autodesk.com. Hope to see you next week, Tuesday, same time. Thank you very much, and uh, continue to visit our blog to see our upcoming sessions. A very interesting topic as well from the photogrammetry field, project memento, new technologies being developed, and we'll be glad to share all that info with you. Thank you very much, and this session will be also recorded on and posted on our YouTube channel. Thank you again. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.